Hi and welcome to the Business Career College video series. In this particular video, we're going to look at the concept of probate. Now, with all the videos, this is never intended as tax or legal advice. Here I'm going to pay special attention to this. So, this is not intended as legal or accounting advice. If you are actually filling the role of executor or drafting a will or something like that, it is absolutely imperative that you're dealing with an attorney. This video is only intended as general information so that we have a sort of surface level understanding of the concepts at hand. And you should be cautious if clients ask you questions about this, the extent to which you give information. There are differences here from province to province that probate is a provincial specific matter and you can get into other variations when you're dealing with somebody who may fall under federal jurisdiction and then if you have somebody who has property in other jurisdictions outside of Canada this further adds to the complexity here. You have to be so cautious around this so the video is intended only as very generic advice around probate. So let's start by looking at what is probate. So it often, especially in the insurance world, probate sort of gets a bad rap. But the reality is probate is a valuable process. And really the basic gist of it is that we're making sure that the executor carries out the terms of the will. So the idea here is just to say, okay, what does the will say? What has the executor done? And the courts are just going to want to marry these two things up to make sure that this is actually happening as it should happen. So it's not intended to be an intimidating process or anything like that. It's supposed to be, although it is quite complex in some cases, it's supposed to be just a process of, okay, what does the will say? Let's have a look at the will. And then we can take that and we say, what did you do, executor? And we can match that up and hopefully those two things make sense. Now, you could run into some problems here for sure. But really, the thing that gets most often sort of bandied about with probate is around the costs. And this varies from province to province. So the costs here, in some provinces, Alberta, for example, there's just a flat fee, a flat probate cost, and that's a maximum of $400. There was some consideration in the failed 2015 uh, conservative budget to increase that, but it actually stayed at $400. And then in other provinces, and this would be, by the way, this is a probate fee, And then you have other provinces which charge a percentage of assets. So you'll find, for example, in Saskatchewan or Manitoba, that this is 0.7%. Now, up to 0.7%, and it's a tiered amount. So at the largest estates, a 0.7% fee is assessed on the value of those total assets. And in Ontario, Ontario gets a bad rap here. Ontario probate is... 1.5% and it varies from province to province, so BC at 1.4% and so forth. That's the most it can be in Ontario, 1.5%. You'll find not all the states end up at that large amount. So you'll want to know what probate is for your uh, particular province and that's easy enough information to obtain. So then we look at not just the costs here, but we can look at what's actually entailed in probate. And what we're really going to do here is we look at, okay, who is the executor? And the executor is going to get some sort of indication that they are the executor. We're going to have letters of administration or letters of probate, some variation on that. And it depends sometimes if there's a valid will or not exactly how we get to this process. But at some point along the way, the executor is going to get that documentation. 
And basically that just gives them the ability to act as the trustee with respect to the estate assets. So this is a fairly in-depth process, but there are some fundamental things that the executor is always going to do. They're going to get an accounting of the assets and liabilities. So they have to figure out what's out there. So basically this can work a bunch of different ways. Uh, it used to be more of a requirement to go ahead and advertise for creditors. Uh, that sometimes is no longer required today. Again, you have to get specific advice for your specific jurisdiction. So a bunch of different stuff you might be looking at here. But the executor does have responsibility to make sure that creditors are identified. And if the executor does not take reasonable steps to identify the creditors and instead goes out and disperses assets, that actually can result in a personal liability for the executor. So once we have this accounting, then we're going to start working towards a tax bill. So we want to understand what the tax bill is going to be. And this again is a somewhat involved process and if it's done poorly the executor ends up with the personal liability for this. It's a, a joint and several liability between the executor and the estate if the tax bill isn't handled properly. And one of the problems here is it takes a very long time to get this done properly. So normally what happens is fairly soon after death the executor is going to file the appropriate tax returns and then CRA typically takes a year and a half, sometimes more, to process those returns. And at the end of that process, the executor gets their, their uh, clear, clearance certificate. Sorry. And that clearance certificate tells them that all the taxes have been paid. So one of the issues that can arise is just how long it takes to get that clearance certificate. Normally what's going to happen here is the executor is going to do whatever distributions they can in advance of that and typically hold something back to make sure that the taxes were properly estimated and that they didn't pay out money they shouldn't have paid out because that, again, that's the executor's liability if we didn't do that properly. Now, some issues that arise here. So when we go through the process of probate, one of the, again, criticisms here is that it, there is a lack of confidentiality because we're dealing with the court system. Once you're dead, your will becomes a public document. It's not while you're alive, I guess unless you tell everybody what's in it, but on your death, your will becomes a public document. So anybody who wants to can go to the court clerk and have a look at your will and see what you left and to whom you left it. There are ways to deal with that. That's why sometimes we use tools like insurance or trusts so that we can still have that confidentiality. We have other issues that come up here. Residency. And this is a big concern, and I mentioned this at the start of my disclaimer as well, that depending on where you have property, you may actually have to go through probate in multiple jurisdictions. This can be very complicated. and very costly. So if you do have property, if you have clients who have property in multiple jurisdictions, they have to typically deal with a lawyer who has experience dealing with those cross-border issues and can properly draft a will that's going to be respected in those multiple jurisdictions or failing that, sometimes this is where we even require multiple wills or different versions of the will. So there's a whole bunch that can come up here. And then, while we're on the subject of the lawyer, another knock that sometimes people make about the process of probate is that sometimes you end up paying additional legal fees. And it is something that the executor should understand at the start here, that sometimes a lawyer will charge legal fees based on a percentage of assets. You just want to understand these and make sure that you're paying for something that you actually understand. And this should be done um, when the will is written. This should be done 
when dealing with a lawyer along the way. Failure to address those fees sometimes leads to frustration later on. It's like anything, when you have this sort of uncertainty of costs, it's important to get a, at least something of an understanding. The lawyer might be hesitant to give a final sort of accounting before everything is done, which is understandable, but it is important that you understand what you're getting into here. So I hope this helps to understand the process of probate. It's a fairly complex process in practice, and this level of complexity means that it is important to have good advice around this. This is just a very general overview of the process of probate. I do hope you find it helpful, and I hope you enjoy your continued studies. Thank you very much.